Good afternoon and welcome to the Clean Tech Lithium PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it received in the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Dr. Steve Kessler, non-executive chairman. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good, good afternoon. If we go to the first slide, Aldo. Yeah, I'll give you uh, a quick overview of, of uh, where we are and what we're doing, and then hand over to Aldo uh, to go through in, in, in more detail. Now, clearly, we're, we're, in, we're in Chile. We have um, two proven uh, lithium brine aquifers that we totally control. We've now got a third one, which looks uh, very exciting. Um, and of great interest is that these have tremendous um, uh, prospectivity uh, for upgrading in the size of, of the resource. We will be using direct lithium extraction to, uh, to recover the uh, lithium you know, from the brine. This has the advantage of having a very low environmental footprint. The size of the plant is lower and the spent brine is returned to the aquifer. So there's no uh, water loss um, from the aquifer. We'll be using renewable energy um, to drive the, uh, the plant. So the, the lithium that we're going to be producing uh, will have close to zero um, carbon emissions, which we believe has got a critical advantage, particularly in the EU market and the, and, and the US. When we compare ourselves to the peer group of, uh, of other DLE projects, you'll be able to see that our market capitalization compared to the resource that we have uh, is very much lower um, than, than our peers. This gives us a very attractive um, entry point for investors um, coming into the project. Our board and management are very experienced at developing projects in the Chilean mining industry and the renewable energy um, sector. Um, I myself have spent my entire life in the mining industry, majors like BHP and Rio Tinto, uh, developing over 30 years of mining projects in, in Chile. Uh, from growing uh, Escondida from its startup um, to be the, the largest uh, copper mine in the world. And then as the first CEO of Kayawasi, taking that from exploration through financing and into construction. I've also been CEO of a, of a lithium company, ASX Listed, with projects in, uh, in, in Europe. Aldo's got tremendous background in, uh, in the mining sector in, um, in Chile, but in particular in pushing renewable energy um, projects um, into production in, in, in Chile. Most people will know that the Chilean government has changed uh, recently. There was a constitutional uh, review. Um, Aldo will talk more, more about that, where that's gone. But in particular, we're very uh, heartened by the stance of the new Chilean government being very, very supportive of private sector mining investments, particularly like ours, uh, which are done in an environmentally sustainable way. So, Aldo, you can take it. Through. Yes, thank you for the introduction. The introduction. Um, um, I'm the CEO of the company, and I think Steve said everything about me. Uh, so I, I'll go just with a snapshot uh, of where we are and what we're doing and our uh, vision uh, for going, taking the projects forward. Uh, it's no, it's no surprise, uh, and everybody saw in the common, in the common uh, information that the lithium demand has been growing, and will keep on growing, uh, and and most of that lithium that comes from hard rock mines, they're carbon intensive and not environmental, environmentally friendly, and at the same can be said for evaporation ponds who who sit uh, in the lithium triangle, uh, where we are. Um, less than that, hard rock mines, but still uh, depleting aquifers uh, by drying up in evaporation ponds and then with a footprint on the surface. But so we're, we're trying to change that uh, and, and creating a new path for lithium uh, based on, uh, we're aiming to be the greenest lithium producing company of the world. We have these three highly strategic lithium projects, two sit at the southern tip of the lithium triangle Hombre Muerto, it's, it's on Argentina to the east of us, uh, across the Andes. We sit um, a little bit south of uh, uh, Maricunga, another project uh, run by another company, uh, Codelco, one part, and Lithium Power. And to the east of that in Laguna Verde. These two projects are the ones more developed. We have control of the complete basins, uh, very important for direct lithium extraction that uh, we'll talk, DLE uh, is also known. 
uh, in, in a couple of more slides. But uh, if you want to really have a DLE properly done, you have to re-inject the spent brine, 100% of the spent brine without the, the lithium on it, and without adding any chemicals. And uh, for that, to be able to do that, you need to control the basin and have a, a good hydrological model. Um, so again, there are the two more advanced. We have a, a York estimate only recently uh, put out there in the market for Laguna Verde, 1.5 million tons of lithium, uh, 800 million of, of, of those 1.51. It's uh, the tons is measured and indicated. Uh, that allows us uh, for a, a production at the scoping study of the PFS level of 20,000 tons per year. The same can be said about Francisco Basin. In this case, with just one hole, uh, we have a, a little bit over half a million tons of lithium. Uh, at the inferred resource level with uh, 305 milligrams per liter as an average. Um, the, the, the board, as Steve mentioned, is a, and the management too is very experienced uh, in developing major new mines in Chile. Chile is a major mining jurisdiction along with uh, Canada and uh, Australia. Uh, some of the top world's engineering companies are headquartered in Chile, like Bechtel, and uh, doing projects all around the planet because of the capacity of, of the engineering in Chile to, to deliver uh, and run very important projects. Uh, we're a registered company in Jersey. We have offices in London, Santiago, and Jersey. Uh, we raised 9.6 million in pre-IPO and IPO funds, 4 million in October of last year. And then we got listed in March 17, we raised the remaining 5.6. That will carry us over um, tower all the way to pre-feasibility, but uh, if we want to do more drilling, uh, we'll, we'll in the future need to raise some more. Uh, again, the board, uh, very experienced at the financial level, technical level. It's very rare to have a, a non-executive chairman as Steve uh, with extensive mining experience and also extensive governance experience. Again, people in, in Chile, uh, are very experienced and, and we are, we've been uh, adding a more people to our team to go forward. This, Steve, you want to take this slide? Yeah, <clears throat> everybody knows that that lithium is the fastest growing commodity um, in, in in the world. It's particularly the case in EU, where the uh, the the EU governments are, are trying to address global warming by driving uh, the implementation of electric vehicles. Hence, there's a large number of new battery plants uh, coming into, in, into Europe. They demand lithium. And the forecast is that lithium demand in the EU will grow by 20 times in the course of the, the current decade. Uh, the governments in, in uh, Europe uh, not only want the lithium, but they're also demanding of the car manufacturers and the battery manufacturers that their supply chains are also decarbonized. And here we can, uh, we can see, as, as uh, Aldo was saying, Hard rock mining has very high intensity of carbon dioxide emissions per, per ton of lithium. Um, the evaporated ponds, no, significantly so. We aim to be close to zero uh, carbon dioxide um, emissions from our production. And we believe that will give us a, a great marketing advantage into the EU and the um, uh, US. And in time, I uh, feel that that will be able to allow us to demand a premium uh, for the supply of our material into the EU and the US. So uh, we mentioned already, Steve and I, that uh, Chile is highly supportive of sustainable extraction. Uh, the the center left uh, government uh, has uh, portrayed our our projects in in, in conferences and shows up and, and shows abroad. Um, we are, like I said before, we're very similar to other prominent mining jurisdictions, uh, but uh, very importantly. Uh, we just to mention it's it's in the public domain. We had a a, a referendum to to accept or reject the proposed constitution. Uh, the the background of that is at at the at the very level the the, the mining industry was going to keep the, working as it is from both sides. They agreed on that before the referendum, but even more so, the referendum showed that the, most of the country in in, a, in in the largest voting in numbers uh, ever. Uh, as, as, as the proposed constitution was rejected, it showed the country that uh, wants to go with all the way of a center left pro-business to all the, all the way to the center right pro-business uh, agenda forward. And now we're taking our time to, to 
come up with a series of ground rules uh, uh, it's set up by the Senate who's split half and half in, in center and center right and center left uh, to come up with the uh, uh, ground rules for the for the uh, another try hopefully successful to have a new constitution that includes supporting of mining private property uh, bicameral uh, government uh, recognition of the the indigenous people, but no a special um, a way of treating them, etc. Um, by the way, the highest percentage in the whole country uh, on the rejection was by the indigenous groups. They just don't want to be, they want to be recognized, but they don't want to be something different from, from being Chilean, part of Chile and Chileans. Um, uh, the government has stated that there's support for a national lithium mining company, uh, along with Codelco, who's in copper, uh, they also spoke of uh, bringing in uh, a, a, a pri the private sector into that company as, as they, they don't have either the, the knowledge and also the, the funds to, to fund that. So we'll see how that plays out. But nevertheless, we've done all the work and all the permitting that has uh, needed to at, at this stage of development. And, and we'll get the remaining as the project advances into, into and we go into production. Uh, here you have a, on the right side, uh, it, it's state of the reserves in the world and the importance of Chile uh, and, and the comparison of the rest of the countries. And at the bottom, you have uh, a, a comparison of our small footprint, a DLE or direct lithium extraction plant with no aquifer depletion compared to, to the current large evaporation ponds in Salar de Atacama. Uh, so let's talk some more about direct lithium extraction. Uh, it's, uh, it's low impact and sustainable. Uh, it can uh, process the, the brine into lithium in a few hours compared to the 320 days or so of the of the evaporation ponds. Uh, it has at the at the at the uh, resin level. It works with the with the with the with the resin to extract only the lithium, and that then is stripped out and clean out uh, and uh, that that lithium in, into all the way into production. And then that spent brine at that time can be 100% be re-injected without the lithium in the subsurface aquifer. Again, the importance of having um, a con full control of the basin is, is key for being able to do that. Again, there's no evaporation ponds, no aquifer depletion. And at the same time, um, the recovery rate uh, at, the, at the resin level is 95%. The whole process is anywhere between 80 and 85 that compares very favorable with the dose of evaporation ponds with between 40 and 50% recovery rate. Uh, the capex is much lower because you don't need to build the, 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 the ponds. It, it goes to market much faster too for evaporation ponds. I already said 320 days of the, this batch process to get all the pools working, but then all the construction and the batch process, anything goes wrong, it starts up again. Um, it's a combination of mechanical and chemical processes. It's uh, nano filtering at the beginning, then the absorption with the resin that I already mentioned. Then comes uh, reverse osmosis, uh, then follows by uh, forced evaporation, and then uh, ionic exchange where you remove complicated and the last tiny uh, parts of, of materials like borum. Um, but direct lithium extraction is not new in the world. It's been around since 1988 in Leiden. In Argentina, where they don't have evaporation ponds, they produce 20,000 tons per year. Uh, a company in China, Sun Resin, who we started working very early in 2018. The company was co-founded by me and another partner in 2017. Uh, they, they, since then, uh, have three producing plants in China out of uh, salty lakes and have worked into agreements with other, with other companies in other parts of the world. And we'll go with that. Uh, in the in the next slide, but um, we produce with uh, with our own proprietary resin one kilo of battery grade lithium. We certified in Germany, and uh, ever since Sun Resin, um, very recently started uh, sent all the parts to construct a, a commercial scale plant of twenty thousand tons per year in Argentina. Um, we signed an MOU with them to 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 develop both the pilot tuning, the piloting that is taking place in China, and uh, and then the, the larger piloting plant, in our case, and then all the way into the production plant. Um, they they deploy this 134 containers, as I said, 
uh, into into the project in Argentina to build the initial stage of a 25 tons per year plant. They um, have uh, acquired and moved more presence in the west of the world, not only in this part of the world in Argentina, but in Belgium, they acquired uh, two companies in 2019 and uh, and have uh, signed an agreement uh, with a company in Utah uh, at the PFS level and also at the future construction uh, project in, in uh, called owned by Hanson in, in Utah also of Leafy. Uh, again, I, I mentioned we we like to have a finished production. I mean, construction in 2024 and starting early 2025, uh, start producing lithium. The, the, from the, since the, the, the purchase order came from this uh, uh, salar owners in Argentina till the, they delivered this, this 134 containers and resin, it took only five months and the, and the expected construction time is nine months. Uh, so this is what I was mentioning. This is around the world, uh, junior companies like energy, uh, source like Lake Resources, like uh, Rio Tinto, who acquired uh, a company and a salar. Um, what they're doing at the DLE stage level, and then on the left side, uh, like I said, those three producing lakes in by sun resin in China, and uh, and live in, the, in Argentina. We're severely undervalued uh, because of the, the resources we have, because of the valuation uh, it, it, it's lower. We have enough lithium in both projects. To, to produce 20,000 tons per, per, per year once we move into, into production. I didn't mention other companies that we sample uh, and send uh, Brian to, to test a direct lithium extraction, all very positive. It was Lilac from, from uh, California, who has an agreement, equity exchange of a pilot plan and, and PFS with Lake Resources. Uh, we also sent Brian and again, successfully tested uh, in uh, Summit Nanotech in Canada, for Lucid in Canada. Uh, 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 we've also worked with Adionics in France and AGX in Texas. All those companies uh, had a high price for our brine. But again, we went the route of, uh, of an open technology, not a closed box technology like, like the ones I mentioned. And, and on, owned by us, there's no attachment in the MOU with San Resin. They just sell the pilot units, sell us a larger uh, uh, plant, a pilot plant, and then the, the whole plant. Uh, the rest in everything is just a traditional mining um, engagement. Uh, we turned down actually Lilac, who offered us a similar, very similar agreement that, that ended up uh, signing with Lake Resources. In exchange of 10% of our equity, they, they, they said they will uh, provide a, a pilot plan of DLE, direct lithium extraction, and then also they'll pay for a PFS, PFS by Hatch. We turned it down because they needed 24 months to prove this technology and they wanted no uh, dilution of their stock and we're not raising any additional money. So we turned it down because we wanted to go the IPO. But again, also because we didn't like a, like a black box technology or bringing into, into our partnership uh, a source of uh, royalties and that type of a scheme. Uh, this is Laguna Verde project. Uh, this is a photo uh, just to show you the, the very, very, very low impact of a drilling campaign that took six months. All we leave is a small uh, pipe coming out of the coming out of the ground and painted in yellow, so you can see it. Uh, the full uh, drilling campaign, when it was at, at full in February, looked like this on the bottom right. Uh, you can see here the basin and the dominant position we have with the mining rights and option agreement rights. Uh, and what I said already, we have 1.51 million tons of, of, of lithium resources and then a, a little bit more over 800 million are are part of uh, of uh, measured and indicated. Uh, we drilled more and drilled uh, uh, also found brine at, at deeper uh, parts of the basin that held us almost into winter. Uh, we got all this nice uh, York upgrade from what we have previously, but we're going to increase it uh, before the end of the year with a reconditioning of the holes. Who we felt we didn't have enough time when the winter cut up us and then. Some of the samples that we collected were somewhat diluted by fresh water from the surface. Uh, we're working uh, with a scoping study going underway, PFS to plan uh, to start next year, environmental-based studies. Uh, we're finalizing, we already finalized the, the, 
all the quotes and specification of the hydrogeology work and meta will also take underway. As we speak, uh, we're mobilizing for Laguna Verde and, uh, uh, and next week, uh, we, we aim to be mobilizing to Francisco Basin and then resume drilling as we have campsites and everything uh, going forward. Uh, Francisco Basin, I already mentioned a few things, just as Laguna Verde, we're advancing with the scoping study, environmental baselines, and also working towards the hydrogeology model. It was a nice surprise we put this, uh, this property in, in the world map of, of lithium resources with a maiden resource of a little bit over half a million tons of infrared resources with just very well done uh, and very deep uh, eight inch cased uh, bore. Uh, in both places, we Francisco Basin and Laguna Verde, we ran geophysics to maximize the, 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 the probably outcome of the drilling campaign, looking for low resistivity, high conductivity. And, and uh, we, again, we found the surprise as of Laguna Verde, we drill deeper that expected the same here because the geophysics does some of a mirror effect when there's so much conductivity and, and low resistivity. Uh, so it was 204 meters deep, the subsurface aquifer, very a confined aquifer, more than one atmospheric pressure. When we hit it, we hit that target, the, the brine went uh, two thirds of that uh, uh, drilling tower that you see there. And that uh, we plan as we finish the drilling campaign next year to update the market with uh, upgraded resource in general and then uh, more measured and indicated as we did in Laguna Verde. Both places sit at 4,300 meters. There's no indigenous communities. They sit much lower elevation, two hours away. There's no significant flora and fauna. You can see the ground where we're drilling uh, because of elevation. And uh, it, it doesn't pose any problem for, for operating and in the long term. There's mines, copper mines in the area who are higher than this elevation. Yamara is it's different. Uh, it's a new project, it's a greenfield project. We ha also have geophysics, not done by us, but done by a, a many years ago, uh, oil and gas exploration. We plan to do our own geophysics to corroborate this. Uh, we have already collected surface samples of lithium. Uh, so it's, there's no question that there's brine down there, that, that low, uh, a, a clear magenta color shows that there's a brine with, again, with low resistivity, high conductivity down there. And, um, and just need a recognized drilling program that we ex uh, intend to do in November. Uh, it's 344 square kilometers. It's almost, almost exactly twice the size of the other two projects combined. It sits at 1000 meters, has excellent infrastructure, the Pan American Highway, low tension and high tension, uh, a, power lines, substations, a port close by in, in, in Caldera and Antofagasta. It's a little bit to the north west of Salar de Cama and the operations of Abu Marley and SQM. And like I said, sits at 1000 meters. Infrastructure too is great in, in the case of Laguna Verde and Francisco Basin. Uh, we intend to have a power purchase agreement or PPA to provide 24 seven renewable energy. I was involved in the creation and, 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 and three projects accounting for 800 megawatts of photovoltaic uh, solar clean energy. Um, and uh, I'm very proud as, as a country as a whole, we moved more than 50% of the total energy of the country being renewables and it's, it keeps growing. Uh, Francisco Basin is only five kilometers away from a substation with ample capacity to connect. Uh, Laguna Verde is 56 kilometers away. That's nothing in mining terms and there's paved highway that goes to Laguna Verde into Argentina. And there's a system of, of, of roads, uh, a mix of paved and not paved to take, uh, take uh, access to Francisco Basin. We also have uh, a evidence of uh, surface water. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, fresh water in the basins uh, with existing wells done in the past. We are uh, doing everything to, to have our own wells by, we have the legal right and the, and the rights to do it because if they're within our property, we can drill for that. And we don't need uh, not even close to all the, all the capacity of, of fresh water because we recycle a lot of the water who's part past the, past the, the, the concentrated uh, illusion that you make. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's something that uh, we don't see as a, as a problem on, on, on the contrary, as, as something we have. Steve, I don't know if you want to take it toward this uh, news flow and the next events in the 12 months coming. 
Uh, sure, sure. There, there's a, a lot happening in the next six, six to 12 months. Now, our first objective is to uh, demonstrate uh, how large the resource um, is going to be when we get back into drilling in Laguna Verde and, uh, and, and Francisco Basin. Now, we've got 2 million tons of, of resource. Our analysts are looking at, I've looked at the geophysics, the size of the basin, and see no reason why we can't get a resource uh, matching that of, of lake resources, which is somewhere north of, of 4 million uh, tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. We've got the scoping studies um, almost complete with, with Laguna Verde and then Francisco Basin to follow. And that will be the first demonstration of the economics of the project. We'll be able to uh, get uh, much closer on, on the CAPEX, OPEX, and uh, rate of return you know, of the uh, of, of the project. Uh, and that will go out into the market so people can see um, you know, how, how great these projects um, are going to be. Uh, the pilot plant work with uh, with sun resin is uh, is, is progressing you know, we aim to have that plant up and running uh, next year and that will be used for optimizing the process design and also producing sufficient um, lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide uh, to send to, to, to uh, prospective um, off takers so that they can qualify the material as uh, as fit for those um, uh, for their uh, production uh, size, we're still working on that, but it'll probably be about uh, one ton of, uh, of lithium carbonate um, a month. Now, clearly, as we've got news uh, has been coming out you know, since our, our listing in March, and we've got results coming out on, on the resource and then we'll have metallurgical uh, results, we're starting to get knocks on the door you know, from potential off-takers and a number of, uh, of, of companies interested in taking a strategic equity position um, in, in the project. We've had knocks on the door from the traditional trading houses, from Chinese um, entities, uh, but we expect to, to, to see that pool uh, widen out as we've seen more players coming into this field. Uh, major mining companies like Rio Tinto uh, are convinced of um, that they want to be in, in, uh, in lithium and DLE is the way to go. So they have bought Rincon a project in Argentina for something like $850 million. They've done their due diligence. They're very happy with the uh, technology. We've had motor companies such as Tesla and Volkswagen publicly uh, ask you know, whether they should be going into upstream mining of, of lithium to secure the supplies that they need uh, to keep their battery plants um, full. So I'm sure that particularly once we have the scoping study out, we'll get into discussions with a number of these parties. We are just about the only lithium company that has not yet given out any offtake um, contracts. That's been deliberate. Uh, we want to leave ourselves free for when we get into discussion with potential strategic partners who will want supply of, of material. Uh, but what we also want to see is a strategic uh, partner um, providing no cornerstone financing for the construction finance um, that is going to be required and also helping to mobilize the banks in their, 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 their home countries uh, to participate in the uh, debt financing package that will be part um, of the financing as well. So clearly a lot of stuff that's going to be going on in the next um, six to 12 months. Yes, thank you, Steve. Uh, we're down to the last two slides. Uh, the key data of the company, uh, we, there's 79, a little bit above 79 million shares uh, in the market. Uh, 30, almost 34% of them, it's not in the public hand. It's held by me and co-founder Jason Baverstock. Uh, funds who are not, uh, 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 keep their position and, and waiting for the long-term return of the project. Uh, and then also uh, the board, uh, who has uh, bought some shares since since the IPO? Um, we, again, we raised at the IPO level five point six million pounds pre IPO four, and uh, we are we're funded uh, all the way in, into the PFS. Um, and again, to stretch, we are uh, uh, the, the most the very attractive and, and non traditional lithium player globally. Steve, to to summarize. Yeah, I, I think if we look at all these factors that makes uh, cleantech lithium uh, an exciting uh, you no know, prospect, you no know, clearly with the technology that uh, that that, that we, we have, we've got a short lead time to uh, production, much 
faster than a, a traditional um, evaporative pond. Um, our aim is to ensure that we have minimum environmental um, impact uh, with reinjection uh, of the spent brine so we don't impact the, uh, the water table in the uh, aquifer. Um, use of re renewable energy to make sure that we are attractive to the EU and demonstrating that we're decarbonizing their supply chain in terms of the lithium that, that we provide. Um, infrastructure in Chile is, is, is not only physical in infrastructure, it's, it's, it's the, the human capital of, of the country, very strong support for the uh, mining sector, uh, all the consultants, engineering companies that you need to, to develop major projects are based in Santiago, not just for the local um, industry, but they also service uh, mining industry uh, world, worldwide. We don't expect environmental um, approvals to, to be an, an issue. There's no, uh, no, no indigenous communities, no specific flora or fauna uh, that, that will be disturbed. And clearly we have a very supportive um, you know, government uh, for the development of mining projects, in particular the lithium sector, especially when it's done like ours in an environmentally uh, sustainable way. Okay, I think that just about ends the, the uh, presentation and um, we're open for questions. Alden and Steve, thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just using the Q&A tab, which is situated in the top right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Alden and Steve, as you can see, we've received a number of questions throughout today's presentation. Could I just ask you to read out those questions and give responses where it's appropriate to do so? And I'll pick up from you yeah. both at the end. I'll start from the top. Uh, has the drilling started in Francisco Basin? Not yet. We're uh, mobilizing next week uh, equipment and it will start shortly after. Uh, it's just the end of the winter and the, and the clearance of the roads and all that work. Uh, when will the pilot production facility start to be built? Again, this is this is a, a, a smaller, a scalable uh, pilot unit that it's uh, being shipped from Belgium into Chile, and and uh, we should have that up and running in the next four weeks. A larger, a larger pilot plant unit uh, will take some some twenty to twenty five weeks uh, to to be fully operational. Um, the question of the website still not being updated with the Mara. Yeah, we're coming up with a new website. Uh, in the, there's presentations in within the current website that has Yamara as just as this one. Um, will you need to raise funds this year? How much will you need and what will be used for doing at Yamara? I will defer this to you, Steve. Yeah, uh, we, we're, we're fully financed with the, the money that we raised pre-IPO and IPO uh, for our current work program, you know, which is taking us all the way through with our, uh, our current dr drilling uh, that we have, the scoping studies, the environmental baseline studies, and uh, the pilot plant work, and going into the the, the PFS um, next um, next year. And that that's the funds that we're we're, we're comfortable uh, with. Now, clearly, we've had uh, some of our uh, uh, investors you know, would would like to see us go much faster on the, on the drilling to maximize the resource get going in, in Yamara. Uh, as a board, we haven't taken a decision um, on that yet. We don't know, uh, know how much that would, uh, would, uh, would cost and when would be the most appropriate time uh, to raise funds um, for that. But at the moment for our current program, we are fully funded. Yes. Uh, do we have any oil and gas expertise to lean on regarding the re-injection of brine? Uh, we, we're, it's more hydrogeological. Uh, experience and uh, yes, we we have a, a, a full time hydrogeology on site. Uh, we work uh, on the on the at the IPO uh, level with a very respected company called Montgomery Associates, who is also very knowledgeable knowledge of of, uh, of um, hydrogeology models and, and and all related. And there's a couple of other companies and consultants on that front. Um, what is access like to and from the Francisco Basin? Yes, uh -huh. there's cell phone coverage. There's a four four roads to access uh, Francisco Basin. Uh, there's uh, they're maintained by the government and also by some nearby uh, gold uh, companies. Um, there's water. Yeah, we answered that already, I think, in the, in the presentation. 
what level of magnesium content do we have in the brine and how will this affect the process going forward? Uh, the ratio of lithium to magnesium is with, in both sites, Francisco Basin and Laguna Verde, it's below the threshold of, of 10. Uh, the, the, with the resin that you, you, you go with uh, at the absorption level, you go uh, working um, more in cycles. You, again, you, you can get 95% of the, of, the, of the lithium. And then the remaining ma magnesium uh, because you, the nanofiltering at the beginning also gets some larger molecules like magnesium and calcium. And it, it can even uh, take more than the ratio of one to 10. It's not our case, but if that was the case, let's see in the, in the future, it, it, it just uh, a little bit more of, a, of an OPEX, but not, not a technical difficulty. You have three projects there, it says. So we'll be there a fourth in Chile. We, we don't know. <laughs> we keep working with, a, with the, one of the top if not the top uh, land management team of the country, both inside uh, capacity and, and outside, uh, a very, very well-established uh, land management office who uh, 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 manages the land management of, uh, of uh, BHP, uh, Escondida, Codelco, I mean, uh, et cetera. Uh, so we might, we might add, a, add a project and just keep working on it. Uh, Steve, this question is more for you. What is the current rate of monthly cash burn and what specific time point you anticipate completing the next fundraise? Oh, well, we haven't even thought uh, about that yet. <laughs> at, 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 the end of, at, at the end of June, uh, when we uh, put our, our financials out, we had cash of uh, somewhere north of, uh, of 4, million, uh, 4 million pounds. Uh, and that takes us through, uh, say, to completion of the pre-feasibility study um, in the in the second half of um, of, of next year, um, and that's to do all all the work programs um, that 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 we have. Um, clearly, if we wanted to do uh, much more um, drilling at at Yamara or look at acquiring other you know, projects and getting into to the feasibility study uh, beyond the pre-feasibility um, ne next year, uh, the board will take a decision as to as to how much and when uh, would be the most appropriate time for um, bringing in, in additional funds. But the timing uh, at the moment, as I said earlier, we have the funds to complete the, the current programs through pre-feasibility um, second half of next year. Well, yeah, you, this is another question regarding money, Steve. Uh, how much money ballpark will it take to make Laguna Verde producing mine? Well, that will come out in the uh, first estimates in, in the scoping study. Uh, but you, you, you can have a, a, a general feel. We, we talked about the, um, the project in Argentina uh, where Sun Resin are, are providing uh, the plant for a 50,000 ton a year uh, plant. Uh, they're, they're envisaging 700 million uh, no ca capital expenditure. Um, so for a 20,000 ton uh, plant, you're looking at 40% of that. Uh, next question. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Uh, when funds are raised with expected takeoff agreement in the next few months, will money be raised for both Laguna Verde and Francisco Basin or just Laguna Verde, Steve? Yeah, well, we, we don't have any offtake um, agreements. We, we have uh, mentioned that we've deliberately not uh, wanting to, to give offtake agreements until such time as we've completed our resource expansion scoping studies and uh, we are ready to start talking to potential um, strategic, uh, strategic partners who can um, you know, assist in the, in, in the funding of the uh, construction uh, finance that will be um, required. So we do not need funds you know, from off-takers um, to do the work that we have um, already planned for Laguna Verde and Francisco Basin. And we will continue to work on both of those, both on resource um, expansion and scoping study. I've been passing all the questions to you, Steve, but this is again for you, I think. We haven't had any news from Canaccord, uh, our new broker. Okay, well, well, well Canaccord, um, as, as most people will, will know, is the, is the broker that's got the widest exposure to the, uh, the lithium um, sector. Normally, uh, they only act as brokers um, for companies with much larger uh, market capitalizations than, than us. Uh, clearly, they, they've looked at us and they, they like what they see in the potential of this company to, to grow into 
a much larger market cap company, which they would normally um, support. They've been working on, uh, on a, you know, with their analysts um, on an initiation note, and uh, they tell us that it is imminent. Yes. Uh, another question, ST, to you, I can compliment that. What risk does the company face? Well, we have all the normal risks uh, which, uh, which, which, which companies you know, have. It's going to be you know, technical risks, but we think we have those you know, covered. We demonstrated we have a large uh, resource that can only get larger. We have uh, technical risk in the application of DLE and the downstream processes to make battery grade carbonate and, and uh, hydroxide, but we'll be working with the company that's uh, been leading the development of the industry in Sun Resin. There's uh, execution risk in, in, in projects, but we're working in Chile uh, where we have very good infrastructure and uh, an excellent technical capability of people um, to support um, our, our, our project. Uh, there's always going to be um, pricing risk in, in terms of what's going to happen to lithium price in, in the long term. At the moment, it's an all-time high, close to $70,000 a ton. Most people expect that to, to decrease. There's uh, market analysts now projecting, is that going to go down long term to 25000 20000 16000 We don't know. Uh, what we have to ensure is in our pro project design to make sure we have uh, low operating costs. And when you look at uh, other you know, DLE uh, or other brine uh, producers, you're looking at production costs in the uh, three and a half to four and a half thousand dollars a ton. We expect to be somewhere in there. So still there's a very healthy operating margin uh, compared to a projected long-term $20,000 a ton lithium. If it's higher than that, then uh, operation, operating margin will be um, even more. There's always political risk. Um, again, I've worked in, in most, uh, most countries in, in the world. And I know when I was working with, with Billiton and, uh, and we were looking at uh, high-grade copper deposits in the DRC and lower-grade copper projects in Chile, and I was asked by the board, uh, where should we be putting our money to work? I said, go for Chile, not the DRC. There's lower grade, but you have a much higher uh, no, no potential of getting a project off the ground where you're supported by the government uh, in a very stable uh, political um, environment and very strong technical skills. So there's, there's, there's all the different risks um, out there. I believe with this project, you know, with the partners um, that we are, uh, bring on board with Sun Resin um, and with the uh, very supportive of government, we try and uh, reduce those risks um, absolutely to the minimum. Yes. Uh, the next question is the intention to build these projects out in a modular fashion, noting the initial 20,000 tons per, per production per year uh, of, uh, being the target of the project. What is the theoretical production output per project at current estimates? All these questions be answered fully uh, when the scoping study, uh, the, who's, it's kind of a preliminary economic assessment uh, will be out uh, before the end of the year. And then uh, we go into the PFS and F FS mode, pre feasibility and feasibility mode. Uh, it, it, they are modular uh, and we intend to originally to, to, to talk about 20,000 tons per year. We have to, again, to corroborate that. And then larger than that, uh, it's again, it will be something that the engineering studies will, will provide. Next question is, how does the technology developed by Beyond Lithium integrate with the off-the-shelf equipment purchase from Sun Resin? First of all, uh, it's Beyond Lithium who pointed us to Sun Resin in 2018. They've been, they collaborate uh, frequently together. Uh, Sun Resin, uh, 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 Beyond Lithium developed a resin that, that, that we acquire. We have all the data from that. We'll keep working now at, at the, with Sun Resin uh, to improve uh, uh, the resin that we already have or, or work with the resin they have. That, that's, that was the technology development by Beyond Lithium. And so it's, it's just, just the resin, it's important. And just the fact they could produce one kilo battery grade, but uh, it, it's uh, always backed up by some resin and it's the one who are moving forward. So there's no problem on integrating that resin into some resin process. Are the flow rates encouraging the next question for the well stream today? Are the existing dried wells intended to use for production later in the project development? 
Uh, in the case of Francisco Basin, the eight inch cased hole can be turned into a production hole or used as a production or monitoring hole. In case of Laguna Verde, the three inches holes that, uh, that we cased and, and sampled, they have to be expanded if we find good grade. Uh, yes, there's a lot of uh, good uh, flow rates that you do when you drill, you do uh, some testing to, to assess that, but a, a full uh, flow rate will have once the, the whole, the wall is completely uh, established and, uh, and um, stable. And then we can do properly uh, part of the hydrological model. We do a pump test. We haven't done pump test other than the, the drilling at, at the drilling stage, uh, doing doing some analysis on the flow rate. But they're encouraged, and they are. Um, are the existing, yeah, it, it responded yet. Uh, Steve, uh, this question is for you. What do you think the catalyst will be for the clean tech market cap to reach parity or somewhere close with its compet competitors? This is speaking of that chart that we had. Yeah, I, I think our, our closest corollary is probably Lake Resources in, 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 in Argentina. Um, they, they're they um, maybe 18 months in, in advance uh, of us. They've declared 4.4 million tons of, uh, of resource. We think in the next six months, we, we should be able to get close um, to that. And that's not even considering the potential of, of Yamara in the um, future. Uh, the pilot plant uh, work that we're going to be uh, doing will demonstrate um, an, an optimal process and that we can produce larger quantities of battery grade material um, for, you know, for, for off takers. So those are, are the two keys you know, for us is, is increase the size of the resource and, uh, and demonstrate with the pilot plant we have, uh, we have a robust process that delivers battery grade um, material. The scoping studies um, are, are, are key in, in that they will be able to deliver uh, what is the first economic evaluation of these projects. And when we look at the NPV of the projects um, that will be uh, declared compared to the market capitalization that we have at the moment, everybody will be able to see how undervalued um, it is. And in particular, when, uh, when uh, investors look at the performance of um, the management and the board at delivering on all the news workflow and they can see that the the company is absolutely prioritizing to bring this project into uh, production um, as soon as possible okay next question is uh, will both laguna verde and francisco basin be brought online simultaneously or will one be prioritized as we speak uh, laguna verde is a little bit advanced but we're, we're intending to catch up uh, this season uh, with both projects. Both are undergoing environmental, initial environmental study with base studies and other parts of that environmental study. Both are gonna be having a scoping study by the end of the year. Both are gonna be subject to hydrogeological work. So so yeah, we, we, uh, we, we intend to advance them both. It's not a small feat to be running um, a simultaneously drilling campaign, but we did it successfully in the past season and we still want to do it. Uh, James, are you still working with KMX Technologies? Yes, yes, we, uh, I mentioned the five stages of the DLE process at the end, it's the ionic exchange. From there, uh, at that time, the brine, uh, the, the liquid really, the elution liquid, eluted, uh, liquid is at ten, up to 10,000 parts per million. And then you go into the enrichment of lithium. Um, we're working and, and uh, we'll announce to the market soon with KMX uh, uh, to integrate at that level and integrate that with the sun resin plant to, to take that uh, 10,000 parts per million to a much higher concentration uh, without, uh, by, and by that saving the use of energy and water. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pilot plant that is going to be done by them. Uh, yes, that's all the questions. I think we answer all. Uh, uh, I think we haven't forgotten anyone or Aldo, any question. Aldo and Steve, thank you very much. I think you have actually managed to address all the questions from investors. And of course, the company will review all the questions submitted today and will publish those responses on the InvestMe company platform. But just before redirecting, investors provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to the company. Aldo, could I just ask you for a few closing comments? Yes, uh, again, uh, we're, the, we're looking for a great 
a green a low emission lithium uh, uh, production using direct lithium extraction in a leading uh, mining jurisdiction, in this case, Chile. Our border management experience of delivering mining projects in Chile from exploitation into production is key for the development of this project. And again, it's unrivaled opportunity to invest in, in, in a notably undervalued lithium opportunity. So uh, uh, current investors, uh, new investors are, are welcome. Aldo, Steve, thanks once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Clean Tech Lithium PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all. Thanks.